Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 251 of Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast on all of the internet. My name is Summer Rain. My name is Patrick Nisley. My name is David Howe, and boy, oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest joining on today's episode of the show. Uh, joining us for the first time, we got the wonderful Brie Hudock on the show. How's it going, Brie? Thanks. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Brie, we are so excited that you're here. Uh, Brie is here today because we uh, needed a peach enthusiast to talk about <laughs> Princess Peach Showtime. So excited to have someone else on that loves Princess Peach. Uh, <laughs> but before we get into that, we'll be doing the news like always. Uh, lots of dramatic things happening this week between Kotaku and uh, Super Mario Maker, also the Splatfest this past weekend. But before we get into all of that, how's everybody doing? Doing pretty good. I'm, I think I'm having a pretty all right week. Um, yeah, I, so I saw some good movies in theaters this weekend. I'm trying to think. I don't know. It was mostly chill. I, I think I had a pretty chill time without a ton to write home about. I think that's good. Yeah. Right? No news <laughs> no is drama. good news, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't move anywhere intensely <laughs> and just get there and started recording. Uh, but we'll, spoiler alert. Like me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll just go ahead and go next. Yeah. So, I was like, no, I led you in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank yeah. you, David. So, what David is alluding to is I, uh, I haven't been on the podcast in a while. It's not because I didn't care about everything that we've talked about in the past month. Uh, <laughs> my life has just been crazy. Uh, I went uh, and visited. I, I went to Anime Milwaukee, first of all, and that was also, um, we were celebrating my best friend's bachelorette party there, so we dressed up as Princess Peach, Princess Daisy, and Princess I Rosalina. I saw pictures of that, with the, <laughs> the Mario with the covered gonads. Yes, that was an interesting... we did pin the, pl- <laughs> we did pin, pin the pipe on the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Princess Peach getting married, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did like a cute like jumper look for them, and then we also and then we transitioned into like a more bachelorette style like look for the evening, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, but then when I was up north, I because fl- I flew into O'Hare, I checked out um, what was to be my new house, and I packed. We packed up everything. It was a really quick turnaround. I don't want to get too into it, but I live in Chicago now, and nice. um, I, I love it here. I've been in Oklahoma for the past ten years. I uh, didn't mean to live there that long. Didn't you know? Not no disrespect to the state of Oklahoma. It was just no. Time- it's okay. We could say fuck Oklahoma. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I, I think we have like one remaining listener from Oklahoma now that I'm <laughs> gone. But like I, um, I this is where I'm from. All my family is here. A lot of the things that I'm interested in are here. And I'm I got I got here yesterday. So uh, f- or oh. if you're listening to the podcast three days ago. So uh, all the boxes behind me. Uh, hopefully I'll have this a little more set up by the time I'm here next week. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind of just getting my life figured out. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very inspiring. Enjoy the deep dish. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Already, gosh, I'm so sorry, Domino's Heads. I was one, pro- I mean, like, still spiritually am one, but, like, it, there is just so much, like. Does, does a- Domino's in, in Chicago not have deep dish? I have no fucking Why would idea. You? But also. <laughs> Good question, Patrick. Right? Good it, fucking it, question. There's so many like deep dish chains in Chicago. I feel that already. way about Austin, you guys. Like we, we have good pizza here. See, and we don't I, need that Domino's. Wasn't, the, it's not that there was, it's not that all the pizza in Oklahoma was bad, but like I live in Chicago now. Like why would I eat Domino's? Look, could you get a, could you get a fucking solid medium pizza for six ninety nine <laughs> anywhere else, Patrick? That's my question. In Biden's America? Oh, Come on. <laughs> Biden's America. <laughs> Okay, but like real talk, I went to Aldi today and the prices were pretty much the same. So everybody trying to scare you about the cost of living, like it's good to know. Groceries yeah, were like the same price here. <laughs> um, how about you, Patrick? How you doing? I'm doing good as well. I have been really focused, as many uh, longtime listeners know, on making this indie game, Monochrome Heights, and I've been really trying to make a big push to get a demo out for public consumption. And I think that's gonna be happening before the next episode <laughs> hopefully this weekend oh, okay um, and I've been making a lot of um small changes that I think add a lot to the game mm-hmm. Tyson the uh 
friend of the show, been on the show, Ty Taibo's on the Discord, has done some really awesome art, some character portraits and stuff oh, that are in the game. Nice. I think it, I, I'm really excited to share very soon, and I think that's happening. Um, so I'm really looking forward to to that <laughs> being out and sharing with with all, all of you listeners and viewers and stuff. So that's been what I've been up to. So, yeah. Very cool. How are you doing, Bray? You know, I'm doing all right. Um, for people who haven't met me or heard my voice, this is not my typical voice. I did happen to get COVID on Friday, like oh, no. oh, right fuck. at the same time that I got the game ordered. So it's been a weekend of <laughs> Princess Speech. How are you feeling? Are you, are you like feeling okay? Are you? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling okay. so much better than like Friday, Saturday was the worst of it. But right. I- I've gone outside like twice in the last three days. So mm. uh, yeah. Sorry, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. Weekend. <laughs> thanks for doing the show. <laughs> yeah, you know, thanks for human interaction. This is great. Yeah, be glad to. Uh, next time you get COVID, just let us know. We'll book you. Again. <laughs> yeah, We'd love yeah. to have you whenever you have yeah. COVID. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> last week we did an episode on spinoff games for uh, supporting characters in Nintendo games. We sort of pitched. Uh, spin off games real quickly summer did you weren't here do you have anything you want to share in terms of what you'd like to see oh I, you know i i did listen to the episode i do enjoy the idea of like daisy's workforce like uprising um you know <laughs> here for the working man simulator yeah leftist I, politics simulator yeah, so yeah. And, I, and i i love the idea of a waluigi dating sim as well like that's something yeah. that was actually like really heartfelt uh that i <laughs> adore adore that idea um and I'm, of course, in the, like, Zelda needs her own game bandwagon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, not about say I, – I would love it if there was a game that, like, it was the Ganondorf timeline um, where he doesn't get corrupted. And it's actually, mm. like, Link is the corrupted one. Like, that mm. would be – that I would like that because like they're all in balance with each other and we've seen like some tipping of the scales for Zelda too. So like why not Ganondorf be like the good guy at some point? There's surely that timeline exists. Yeah. We got some great comments uh, from listeners um, and and viewers. So over on the discord, Steve Irwin pitched a spinoff DLC for Strikers, Mario Strikers, where it's hockey. I actually really like this idea. I would love to see a Mario hockey game. Um, Hans Gauger said Ridley and Meta Knight need their own games. Uh, Those Mm. are good characters we forgot to mention. Um, AV suggested a co-op puzzle platformer uh, as Pearl and Marina from Splatoon 2. Speaking my language. And then Cool Uncle Vince kind of expounded on Jordan's idea of a Koopa Kids game and, and came up with some other possible gameplay, including a MOBA or an Octopath type game where you ha- each have small their own small chapters. They also Cool Uncle Vince also brought up Captain Rainbow when we were talking about Birdo, which is not a game I was familiar with. It's the only in Japan game starring Birdo, I guess. Um or it's with Birdo. I think it's, Birdo is not the main character, but a yeah, major character. You play as someone named Captain Rainbow who goes to an island full of like unused side Nintendo characters, apparently. Right. So uh, I was unfamiliar with this game as well, and I will be playing it and hoping for a English patch. Oh, wow. Over on Facebook, Chris Friedrich just said, Birdo. Uh, people want a Birdo game. <laughs> we love Birdo. Uh, <laughs> and then on YouTube, a Record2 said, okay, every single idea pitched in this episode is gold. Top pick is that incredible 90s Funky Kong game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Caro said, I made some comments, including some stuff that echoes stuff we talked about. His son also did a theater camp recently. And he is also rereading Dune like David is. Lisa uh, Malgaib. So uh, if you're listening to this episode and you have any comments on anything we talk about, if you're playing through Princess Peach Showtime or whatever, please do uh, share your thoughts and we'll try to shout you out next time. Uh, we've also got a Patreon where you can come and directly support the show. So please check that out. And then um, if you're listening uh, to the podcast version, that's great. But why don't you hop over to YouTube and watch the video version and hit like and subscribe. Yeah. Even if you don't watch it, just just like it and subscribe. It would be forever grateful. <laughs> you should start Slowly. watching now so you can see like as my office space develops and like over time how I. Yeah. That's the meta game. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. You're not, yeah. not going to keep it like that? <laughs> no. I, right. Like, okay. Because right now, right, like I've got all these boxes in a dress form. It's very and, organized. Like, we've got an accordion over there. A dog. A dog uh, who doesn't want to be on the bed. Uh, if, if I could say, I like the tiny little door. 
back there. It's like a yeah, little door. Too. It's a crawl space. Background. This house has so many weird doors and crawl spaces and secrets. I love that. Are stuff. you in the basement? Are you like? No, I'm in the attic. Oh, you're in the attic. Very good. Uh, Very those good. for those of you who are familiar with Poop Girl, uh, she lives in the basement. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. That's something I like about Chicago is they ha- actually have basements. Yeah, it is we, a little bit. That that basement is going to be like a studio apartment down there. Like she's going to have yeah. like a kitchenette and everything. Like, Lord have mercy. Yeah. I, <laughs> right, it's just going to be anyway. pizza rolls all day. We, let's <laughs> move on. Let's move on to the news. <laughs> Yes, let's move on to the video game news for the week. So first up, we're going to be talking about Kotaku, the gaming publication. Uh, Kotaku, uh, apparently their editor-in-chief has uh, resigned, Jen Glennon, um, in response to a management decision to uh, deprioritize news and to prioritize guides as well as i think an edict that makes people have to write like some insane amount of like guides <laughs> yeah i think it was 50 guides a week is mm-hmm. what they're looking for That's which not i don't possible. even understand how that works i know yeah, how yeah. it's possible but summer i feel like you've got some thoughts on this one i have so many okay so two two things as someone who is like regularly been very vocally like ah gaming journalism on this podcast uh kotaku has been one of the few publications that has still prioritized like, like really interesting opinion pieces that uh, I follow a lot of the authors on social media, um, and read their specific articles that they publish here. Um, so to know that that kind of stuff is going to go away, it's heartbreaking, but I also understand that uh, I don't understand. I mean, like I do understand. I just, cause like when I see, I see comments on like Facebook and it's like, it's hard to know if these are just like Russian bots, or if it's like, actually, this is how toxic and awful gamers are. Uh, But then the second thing that I want to (laughs) say is um, they're going to make these horrible guides by doing just the most basic, asinine, clickbaity, like aggregated crap. (laughs) Yeah. How to get the first Pokemon and Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Or the fourth blue star (laughs) in Princess Peach, which I always miss somehow. Right. (laughs) Instead of being a guide, instead of being a guide of every (laughs) star in the first level, it's going to be how to get the first star, how to get the second star. I I also think it's like just not a great um, precedent to set. And I think that it's kind of a little bit short-sighted, this edict that they're making on Kotaku, because it's like, People don't go to certain websites for guides. They just go on Google, say, mm-hmm. how do I find this thing? And then Google AI S- like scrapes. SEO, yeah. yeah, it scrapes whatever top thing is, and then it shows you that so you never even get a click, right? So I don't really understand. It just seems very anachronistic that they're chasing this right now. I mean, I know that IGN gets a lot of success with guides, but that's, that's they're also say. They're IGN and they've been doing guides right. for a long time. So it's a little strange and they still do news. So it's, I don't know. It's just, I, I understand wanting to walk away from this and, um, and it can't have been easy to walk away from an editor in chief position. Um, but you know, more power to her for, for doing that. Yeah. Uh, we'll follow this and see, uh, what happens with Kotaku. Cause yeah. It's uh, ongoing. Yeah. Kotaku is like always, on the shit list for some reason. People just like hate Kotaku. <laughs> That's because of what Summer it's just how, said. They actually publish a, you know, and they, like. It's yeah. how they treated their workers too, though, right? It's like you had right. a lot of really aspiring game journalists, people who really wanted to put in like really interesting work. Um, like if you're familiar with Brian David Gilbert, who's like finally gone public with like what mm-hmm. his salary was living in New York City, working for Kotaku um, after he left the company. And he was the one who brought, he brought in so much revenue for them doing the Unraveled series. So yeah, um, Steven Totello as well is yeah. a great follow. He's still doing really good stuff. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Like people got their start there and then go on to hopefully do better things. So we can hope the same for Jen Glennon because like this sucks. Well, we'll move on to more (laughs) bad news, I guess. Uh, And that is that a large Pokemon fan game site has been taken down. um, And that is Relic Castle. Um, And I don't know a whole lot about that site. I don't know if anybody here does. um, But apparently it's related being blamed, at least on a DMCA takedown notice that um, I guess presumably is from Nintendo or the Pokemon company. Um, it, it's unclear to me because I haven't really followed this in detail. 
Is this a site anybody's familiar with or, or I didn't really use it myself. Um, this just is kind of following a bit of a trend of Nintendo being a little more trigger happy with, uh, fan content and mods and emulators and stuff like that. Um, it has been around for about 10 years, which is, I think why some people were shocked by this, that it seemed like it was a somewhat younger. untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. Why but I mean, compared to some of the others. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, still, you know, in internet, time like 10 years is still a pretty long time right so i think um yeah uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure exactly what was on the site that maybe caught their ire specifically if there was anything in particular that came up i know there are a lot of pokemon like mmo like online type Mods fan games things, yeah yeah exactly so my money's on something like that if they were hosting too much fan content that's the only thing i could think of because yeah. why wouldn't they not go after like Cerebi or Bulbapedia or Merrill World, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's primarily right. what they did here was okay. like mods and fan games and stuff like that. Gotcha. So it, it, it makes sense, but it's just the timing is strange. But who knows, man? And Nintendo's going to Nintendo. Hopefully all the stuff was backed up. Next up, we're going to talk about Super Mario Maker. So this is really interesting. So uh, as we discussed over the last several weeks, uh, there's been a big push to beat all the levels that are unbeaten in Super Mario Maker before the Wii U servers get shut down in April. And so all the really uh, talented Mario Maker players and streamers have been getting all their levels done and they got down to this last one called Trimming the Herbs. And everybody thought it was real, or I guess it's a real level, but um, there's yeah. this there's this uh, aspect of what they are not including levels that were like tool assisted uploads, right? Um, yeah, task task levels. Yeah, yeah so that you'll hear that term task, right? And it turns out that this last level that they've been working on, trimming the herbs, the person who made it finally came forward and has said that it was uploaded using a tool, a task, basically. So mm -hmm. uh, that invalidates the the like goal so some people are like we did it but it feels very anticlimactic and there are still people who are trying to beat it because other TAS levels made by the same maker have actually been beaten by humans so by there's human some people yeah, some yeah, people yeah. are still like attempting to do it. so this kind of created this weird division like it's fascinating yeah. almost. And also like this person, like, I don't know. There's just so many videos I watched where people like Grand Pooh Bear and stuff are like, no, this is not tool assisted. It couldn't have been, you know what I mean? Like people yeah. can do this. This person was really good at this trick and this person stayed silent for a long time, but then kind of came forward. Now it's just weird. That's the nasty thing about it. I think Ahoyo or whatever, Ahoyo yeah. or yeah. Yoho. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but I thought it was kind of scummy that they didn't say anything for so long. Like they could right. have said something weeks ago, right? And they were like, "No, I've left the I've left that part of my life behind." Mm -hmm. you know, it was like, "Fuck you, man! You you knew exactly what was going on. You were basking in the spotlight." Uh, but it's like, yeah, it That's is weird. definitely a bit of a whimper, you know. But this does mean that the last official level that was beaten weeks ago is a level called the Last Dance. So that's pretty poetic that that is the official final level from Super Mario Maker that has been beaten. But, you know, I kind of do still think that people aren't going to let that go and still going to try to beat <laughs> Trimming the Herbs because people are getting better at it every day still, you know, like people were grinding it for like, you know, upwards of like 36, 48 hours of straight gameplay of just failing after one second in this level. Like, <laughs> how do they I'm, feel? Yeah. yeah how like... do you let that go, man? I don't know. I just, I love, I'm just here for all this Mario Maker drama right now. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny too. Cause like, you know, it's, it's called Team 0% and they have like that tweet and it's like, we did it, you know, like weeks ago, I guess. It's just been a week. It's a weird oh. vibe. <laughs> yeah. I just changed the, the energy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you go to the uh, is SMM beaten yet, which is the is Super Mario Maker beaten yet website, it now says yes instead of not yet, which is what it said for the past few weeks. So Interesting. It is the end of an era. Yeah, I've been trying to boot up my Wii U recently to play some Super Mario Maker uh, before it goes down, uh, but I can't find my Wii U tablet charging mm. cable. So I just bought another one on Amazon. So hopefully this weekend I'll be streaming some Mario Maker. Well, moving on, uh, this past weekend, there was another Splatfest in Splatoon 3. Um, and of note about this one, they actually added something uh, to the Splatfest this time around. I don't know if any of y'all had a chance to play any Splatoon 
three this past weekend during Splatfest, but they added these extra little bombs that you get um, when you're playing in a Splatfest. And yeah, it, fizz bangs, right? Is that what they call them? Yeah, I think I, I they know they're called fizz something, but yes, I think they're called fizz bangs. And sort of the better you're doing, the more of them you get. And they're kind of like a, you, they don't replace your bomb. You still have your bomb. It's a different button. Um, it's just, I guess, cool. It, I don't know how I felt about it. Like it didn't change the game that much. I just always forgot I had them when I was playing. Mm, I got in the habit of making sure I used them because I think I would notice some people swimming around with like 10 of them behind them, you know, and <laughs> yeah. be like, oh yeah, I got to use mine. Um, it makes a difference, but it was, it was nice, I guess, to have a little mix up. But anyway, the results of that, this was the uh, music themed drums versus guitar versus keyboard and keyboard won the Splatfest. Which was the official Switchheads pick. Is the we got a... We needed a dub. Yes. We've lost so many of these goddamn things. <laughs> it's so nice to finally be on the winning team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do you play uh, Splatoon at all, Bri? Uh, yeah, uh, not as much. Like, I did all of the linear story mode. The single player uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, nice. I'm, I'm, I'm a multiplayer mainly guy, so it's like, it's a lot of fun to play these. And I haven't been playing a ton like I, I only really played probably an hour or two of the Splatfest but um, I did my part god damn yeah. it <laughs> yeah everything counts <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> we'll be moving on to talking about the Zelda movie so the uh, director Wes Ball uh, for the Legend of Zelda movie uh, shared some thoughts with Total Film and I don't know that there's anything really crazy here to talk about but just the fact that he's out there talking about it i guess has got people talking about it david you're shaking your head is this a nothing to you or is it you just don't like west ball uh i don't know i have never seen a maze runner film so i can't really comment on west ball it's just his comments seemed like a nothing bur burger to me he's like what do you say? I want this to be serious and cool, but fun and whimsical. It's like, yeah. okay, so <laughs> what is it then? I don't know. It's just like anybody. That's what I would say about a <laughs> Zelda movie. <laughs> you know, it's like, I want it actually... to be. I want it to be filmed with a set and actors. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. I don't know. I'm sure he can't talk very much um, about it too. That's but, probably it. But also, I think everybody's hanging on to any. Uh, right? Like anything we can get right now. Cause it's so, uh, unknown. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's kind of, like you said, uh, is not much out of this, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I, every, and apparently we'll be following any, anything West ball says about it. So he, he <laughs> says he wants to fulfill people's greatest desires. So, well, that's not it's a cool way related. to say that. <laughs> We're going to we'll see, see Zelda's ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've always, ever since I was a kid, I dreamed of directing Zelda's ass in a movie. <laughs> Great big ass. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, I, I, I will say I'm excited to go and see his new Planet of the Apes film. He, he's got the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is coming out this uh, summer, I guess. I'm going to go see that and hold any judgment I have on the guy until then. Cause I'm not about to watch like three Maze Runner movies, but uh, I'll go see this. And if that has like a nice vibe, then I think I'll feel a little bit better about where he's going with it. But uh, mm -hmm. I also did see Madam Web, <laughs> which was also produced by Avi Arad, uh, who is the producer of this movie. So who knows what we're in for, man. It's a toss up at this point. Back on Nintendo taking down things. Uh, as we have discussed recently, the Switch emulator Yuzu uh, was taken down because Nintendo settled a lawsuit against them. Well, because it was, you know, code that had been out there, somebody had forked that code. That means like taking it and kind of taking it down a different path mm -hmm. and called it Suyu. Um, and uh, that was being hosted on GitLab, which I don't know if it's exactly like GitHub, but is, you know, a, probably just another online repository for code. And GitLab has now taken that down after they have received a DMC takedown request from the Nintendo. So, um, you know, we kind of talked about this. Could Nintendo do this when we talked about that episode? I don't know that they can legally, but they can send out these letters and people are afraid. So they're taking it down. Right. Um, right. Yep. I don't know what really more to say about this i think that them making a fork of yuzu like the day after nintendo 
settled with the creators of Yuzu in order to bring it down and calling it Sue Yu was very clearly thumbing their nose at Nintendo, you know, being like, yeah. fuck you. We're gonna so it's like this wasn't long for this world anyway. You know, it's the this is again not very surprising news. Um, you know, that said, obviously I think that Nintendo Switch development a uh, Nintendo Switch emulator development is still very much going to be happening. It's just just yeah. don't make a huge fucking scene about it, you know, and you'll probably <laughs> be fine. You know, I think and it's the whole problem here is that they, they make everything way too public. Right. So it's just like, you know, take, take a, take a, a page from some of the people that make fan games and stuff like that. Keep it like kind of hush hush until you're ready to release and then put it out there in the world. We are going to talk about the Circana numbers for February. So Circana is what the NPD used to be called, um, and they do amount of sales of video game uh, stuff for the year and the month. And uh, there are a few interesting things in here that I thought might be fun for us to talk about. So Matt Piscatella always shares all these uh, facts and numbers um, f- on Twitter. So you can always check that out for yourself. But um, of note, I don't think this is a huge surprise, but on the uh, Nintendo front, we'll talk about that first, maybe uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong was leading the sales charts for um, Switch in, in the U.S. Again, that's all physical. But um, but Super Mario Bros. Wonder has been holding that down um, high up and is now at number two. I, I might even creep back up. We'll see. Maybe Princess Peach Showtime will, will do well um, next month. But a couple of other just small things. Helldivers 2, unsurprisingly, is doing really well um, and is sort of the biggest, I think Matt Piscatella said, like the biggest premiere game um, of the year so far. And then I just think this, this is always interesting when he mentions mobile. Apparently, February uh, spending in mobile was like way bigger than February of last year because he always kind of compares year on year things, which is probably to do with Monopoly, uh, the Monopoly Go game. Or is that what it's called, right? Monopoly, something like that. That game is what? really big on mobile. Y'all don't know don't? about that? No. Uh, Monopoly Go, isn't that what oh. it's called? Oh. I thought yes. it, I also heard goat like I oh, go yeah. playing Monopoly. Like I that would be Monopoly funny. with goats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Monopoly Go. Like I think it's yoga. like a very addictive microtransaction-y uh, mobile game that a lot of people bro. play. Is it like um, Pokemon Go? Do you like walk around? I just hear about it and how it's making mad money. I don't know. I've not oh. actually done a lot of research into it. Um, Let's do our next episode on Monopoly Goat. <laughs> yeah, that would be better. <laughs> And then also, this is just funny to me. Apparently, the biggest accessory sold in uh, February was the uh, PlayStation Portal in terms of numbers. So maybe that's not doing as bad as we thought, or maybe f- accessory sales are just, just low. Everyone just has what they need now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Every, yeah. Every home has a pot uh, for chicken or whatever. What is it Lincoln said? But anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, back in the, you guys remember that old uh, president? Uh, but no, uh, yeah, it, certainly the PlayStation Portal is doing better than PSVR. They actually yeah. <laughs> stopped producing that because they have a surplus of shit that they can't sell. Um, but uh, I didn't mean to just dunk on PlayStation yeah, here. This is a little interesting. I mean, you know, Mario vs. Donkey Kong did well, but it's still like behind like Hogwarts Legacy, which is still selling, you know, and, um, you know, it debuted at I think 11 or something like that. So um, it's interesting to see. We're definitely in a bit of a slump year for Nintendo right now. Yeah. And that's showing with these kinds of releases. I'm interested to see how Princess Peach Showtime factors in when we get these reports for next month. But I, I can't imagine that it's going to do too much better than Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Um, I'd love to be surprised. Uh, to find the opposite there. But um, yeah, I don't know if I have too much more to add on this, but uh, it's always interesting to look over these numbers. For sure. And then in our last bit of news, apparently in Japan, a a police officer, um, and I don't know exactly where in Japan this is, but a police officer has been uh, warned or had their pay docked because they had been playing too much switch on the job, which was discovered it uh, like an uh, you know un- unknown like inspection when they found his <laughs> this person's switch plugged into the do- TV in the police officer room or whatever, and they've like calculated how many hours and how many times he's played mm. on the job. So um, at least he's not. I don't know. Police in Japan. I don't know what what the vibe is like over there, but um, still a cop. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just don't plug don't plug your switch in at the pig pen. All right. Come on. You can do you can do better than that, boys. Come on now. No, I don't know. This is funny. I mean, I think we just need to address that all cops are bastards, even Japanese cops. Uh, even if they even if they're switch heads. Even if they're switch heads. Okay. Uh, they're not listening to this show anyway. Um, unless they're watching on YouTube with auto-translated subtitles, which uh you can do. Tell all your Japanese friends. Uh, <laughs> man, I just, I don't know. I found this to be a humorous, um, I don't know. It's nice to have a little bit of a. <laughs> oink, oink. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our news. <laughs> glad we added that news. It was glad glad we added that one. <laughs> we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking all about Princess Peach Showtime. <laughs> We are back, and this week we are talking all about Princess Peach Showtime. The game just came out this past Friday, uh, March 22nd, I believe it was. And so we've all had the chance to play at least a little bit, if not a lot of it. Uh, those of us stuck at home sick. Um, <laughs> uh, and this is the first new Princess Peach focused game since Super Princess Peach, the only other uh, game you know, uh, where she's in a starring role, which was what, almost 20 years ago, 2005. Mm. So it took uh, almost two decades to, to, <laughs> to, to bring her back. Um, we're going to, we're going to mostly talk about princess peach showtime, but do we need to talk about super princess peach real quick? Uh, <sighs> I'll, yeah. I mean, <laughs> who, who here's played it? I mean, is it just, just, is just, just, just I played me? a little bit of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I bought it at lunch as a child uh, because, like, the Princess Peach game. And as far as 2D platformers go, like side-scrolling platformers go, not horrible. Uh, I actually really liked the Umbrella Companion, but, like, didn't fully comprehend how not awesome it was that her powers come from her four emotions and the powers of her four emotions. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's... How she gets through the world, like, you know, crying brings on like a water power and like being happy allows her to fly. And <laughs> it was it was a very 2005. Yes. Uh, game. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 This is uh, the era of Charlie's Angels full throttle. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, they've got another shot here with Princess Peach Showtime. Uh, and we're going to talk about it, but maybe just first off, kind of big picture impressions. How are how are we all feeling about this game after spending at least a little bit of time with it beyond the demo? Yeah, Bree, how, how are you enjoying the game so far? <laughs> um, I, I loved it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, um, I am not like this with all games, but um, yeah, this one just hit me in the sweet spot. Um, yeah. Love Very it. good. How, how, how far did you end up getting? Did you say loved in the past tense. Does that mean you, you finished the game? I Yeah, the only thing I haven't finished, because I didn't realize there were more rehearsals, <laughs> that's the only <laughs> thing I haven't finished yet. So otherwise, I am at 100%. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is not a super completionist friendly game either. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> um, we'll get yeah. to that in a little bit. But uh, oh, that's true. But what about y'all? How, how do you feel about this game? I played it when I've had the chance to play it, which hasn't been a lot. Um, I've talked to a few other people, though, who have played, like, a good amount of it as well. Like, people, and I guess I'll call it both ends of the spectrum. And I think I'm somewhere in between the two of them. So when I say both ends of the spectrum, I mean somebody who calls himself, like, a hardcore gamer and bought it because they love Princess Peach. And somebody who knows that they aren't into games but wants to find games that they can play. Right? Okay. Right. Um, and right. Like I heard both of their opinions and, uh, I totally understood, like heard what they were both had to say about it. Um, and I, what I think I have, well, like, I think I got an hour into it and my opinion mm. was, I wish I had this game when I was a little girl Yeah. yeah. and I'm super enjoying it now. And I feel like that's, who's playing this. And that's not me trying to be like, I was a bad gamer when I was a kid. Like, no, this game is just really friendly. That's how I'm, yeah. that's my kind of take from it right now. Um, and mm. I, right. And, and I'm not like, I, I don't mean handholding. I mean, friendly. Like, I like that, like X pops up to show the control, like to tell, like to tell you if you want to see like what controls to use in that moment. Like, mm -hmm. well, I'm here to tell you, uh, the controls are B and A. 
Uh, that's and, and, yeah. and ZR or LR or LZL. No, <laughs> sometimes, no, sometimes you do need to press the X button yeah. to find out what the controls are because sometimes you have to hold it and then release it. Yeah, will, it's about the timing of those buttons yeah, too. Exactly. It did take me a little bit longer than I would like to admit to figure out how to attack up as the sword fighter piece. Yeah, or, because or detect things <laughs> as detective pieces. <laughs> it's a little confusing for a while. Yeah. Wow. wow. But uh, I think my my two cents would be that I think this is a great game for casual and for kids. Um, if it, and then and maybe really big Peach fans, but like I. It's tough. Like I, I enjoy it. I think there's a lot of fun moments. I don't think a game has to be difficult to be enjoyable, um, though often that helps, right? Like for me, at least, or like at the right level. And mm -hmm. the game's pretty easy and pretty forgiving. Um, but there are still lots of joyful moments and times where it's just like, that's a cool animation and that's a fun little gimmick. And, and I like that and I like the variety and I like the outfits and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. My take would be, I really did not like the demo. I was very unimpressed with the demo and the game is the demo is the worst that the game has to offer, you know, which is not ever really what you want your demo <laughs> to be right. When you're trying to sell people on the game, but it's like the demo is the first two levels, which are like essentially the tutorials of the game, right? You're kind of figuring it out. It's as basic as it gets. Right. So I think, as I started to uncover more of that variety, like you were saying, Patrick, and, and the non-combat peach stuff, I think for me, I think the main problem that I had with it, and this was half of the demo, was the combat plays that you do is really just ends up being just mash a button a bunch of times. And I was like, this is just not very fun. This feels very mindless to me, right? But the stuff outside of that, like the patisserie stuff where it was like, oh, okay, this is starting to get a little interesting and, and like figure skating. I don't want to blow my load on all the, okay, let's rephrase that. <laughs> I don't want to get too ahead of myself with all the peach transformations, but like, uh, you know, like when they started, you know, varying up the styles of gameplay, like, I think it's cool that there is, uh, pretty much a whole style of game here. That's just putting on, a dance routine or a song uh or or a figure skating competition or something like that like that's where the game started getting actually really interesting to me and started like becoming a lot more fun to play and i'm not super far into it i don't think that i've hit all of the transformations yet like i haven't done uh kung fu peach mm. yet and um and there's a couple others and i've only done sword fighter all the way through uh you know i've done all three acts of that one but um but yeah i'm 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 enjoying it a lot more than i anticipated i would enjoy it and i'm a little surprised by this game and yeah i think if you're a kid especially if you're a little girl i think that this game would hit that perfect sweet spot right there um and i've got more thoughts on difficulty later but i'll, I'll save some of that for a little yeah bit. Well, um, well, let's let's talk a little bit more about the gameplay. So the core loop of this game is that there you're at this theater, right? And there's different plays, and um, each one is a different uh, sort of costume outfit, what have you, where you go in and you play through it, and it's different, right? Like it's it's got a lot of variety there, um, but there are some things that are the same, and that is that there are these collectibles, um, and I, I think you were kind of hinting at this, David, that it's. For for a game that's not super challenging, one of the things that can be challenging about this game is getting all those collectibles, especially mm -hmm. on your first run through. I don't know how I feel about the length and replayability of this game. That's something I also want to talk about, and especially with you, Bree, since I think yeah, I think I'm probably the f so I've been my son has primarily been playing. It. I've been doing a lot of watching. I think we are cl very close to beating it, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and I'm a little bit like. We bought this on, you know what I mean? Like Friday. And it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, like a seven hour game if you, to roll credits or something like that, right? It's yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So it's, but anyway, that's all sort of something else. But um, that, the core loop is, I think it's okay. Like, I think it's, uh, I like the the variety, right? Like, um, and the sort of that you have a choice about which rooms you go to in what order to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a boss on each floor, right? No, but let's talk about those collectibles, right? Because like every stage has, or at least every act one, I think has like 10 or so of these like star things that you can collect, right? And really it's only like three or four you have to actually look for because the rest you will get every time you do it. 
you or if you I mean? do it perfectly for some of them, right? Right, right, right. But I mean, like, for it'll be like you start the level and it's like, here's a star. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. it's like, that one's kind of a gimme, right? You know, but then or there are some, it, yeah, 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 exactly. But there are some that are like, oh, this is like behind this weird spot and like, Oh, you're at this precipice where it's like, do I go down what I think is the secret p- route or do I go down what I think is the, and then, oh, I got the wrong route. But then yes. the, it kind of punishes you because there's no good way Backsies. to go back without replaying the entire level again. So I think that to me is my least favorite part of this game. I think that's yes. really frustrating because it's like, and I think I heard somebody else talk about this on a different show. So apologies if I'm if I'm taking this uh, talking point, but it's like, it it feels like, the collectible stuff is like the stuff for adults. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, that's the the wanting to hundred percent a game is like not something that like kids are necessarily going to want to do. Right. But it's like something that we want to do. And then they make it the hardest to like go back and do that without having to just essentially replay the entire game over again. So that's a little frustrating to me. I agree. I just, uh, to, uh, like the same exact thoughts. I, I don't want to belabor it too much, but there are many times where I'm watching my son play and I'm like, don't go through. Oh, okay. I could, cause you can sometimes yeah. tell that that's going to be like a load the next section exit. <laughs> um, and, and like, I'll, I'll be like, I could, but you could have gone the other way. But then there are times where legitimately it's like, I don't know if left or right is the one that's mm-hmm. going to, to yeah. advance the game oh whoops it was so i probably missed something there um and and i get why because there are sort of you know preset beats that don't you know that change it makes sense that they need to load a new area in or whatever mm-hmm. but man i do kind of wish you could backtrack better in this i felt the same way um especially with those origin ones where like they have a really lengthy intro <laughs> <laughs> yeah um those were the the hardest ones um but it, so I went through waves of feelings about this because my first playthrough, I'm like, oh, wonderful. My second playthrough, like to get uh, some of the collectibles, I was like, oh, my God, I've got to replay all of this. Yeah, and then yeah. when I hit like the second and third and like the final ones, it was kind of nice doing the second playthrough because I knew all of the beats. So it was kind of like I was living the whole story. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I think a, a part of this is like the fantasy of being really good at games for people who are not great at <laughs> yeah. games. And I think there's something about the way that you win in a lot of them. I think one thing that unites all of the levels is it's about timing, which to me just like goes with the thematic it being a story, like and knowing mm-hmm. the beats. Um, I don't mm. know. It, it felt really those last levels go quicker than the origin ones where like she's getting the transformation for the first time. So yeah. it wasn't as bad to replay them and um, just doing it perfectly all at once, like felt kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's definitely something to that. I do like that as the acts progress or whatever, they get kind of shorter each time. It's like, you know, we've been here, we've done this before. And so, yeah, I can imagine replaying those would be quite a bit better. But there's also like less collectibles to get in those as well, the further you get in. Uh, yeah, it's nice to just pop in and you are a mermaid peach or whatever. Like yeah, you don't yeah. have to go through that long thing to like find it and become it every time, yeah. which is good. <laughs> I'm always hoping yeah. I already am a mermaid peach whenever I go in. <laughs> so that works for me. But, uh, well, real quickly, Bree, I think you really nailed something about this game that I hadn't thought of, which is that like visually a lot of the moves and a lot of the camera angles and stuff make it look pretty badass. And like, but like there's a lot of like room for error in like, when you're swinging the the whip as dashing thief peach or whatever, like mm-hmm. you have a lot of leverage, but it does kind of like make you feel like a great player, but it's not really required to be one. I think that's kind of a good thing that this game does that I hadn't thought of. I like that. Has a lot of style. That was the first thing I noticed. I was like, wow, this is really nice to look at. And can't I, I, I haven't gotten the thief like yeah thief peach yet but now that you've said that and wow it has a lot of style i'm like is this a persona game actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of. it makes you it's think more, you're good at games so. <laughs> it, it's it's more balan wonder world than it is persona oh, if i'm honest but that's not a that's not a knock against the game it's like it's like good balan wonder world it's what basically it's what, what they this wanted to is. be yeah yeah kind of yeah yeah i don't know this is i mean we should probably take a second to to talk about this game was developed by good feel um who have been longtime nintendo collaborators um they worked a lot on a lot of the like crafted aesthetic games, which you can kind of 
just tell yeah. from this with all the all the like play setting stuff, right? Like it's very Yoshi's Crafted World, Yoshi's Woolly World, oh. and then uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, which they also did, right? Okay. Which are all love those. <laughs> Yeah, and they're all pretty easy games if we're talking about difficulty, right? Like, I think the difference for me, like, because I, I love Kirby's Epic Yarn. I think that might be my favorite Kirby game, despite its incredible <laughs> difficulty. It's, like, not hard at all. It's it's very simple. Mm -hmm. But I think what I love about that game is that it's it's just, it's fun to move around, you know what I mean? And I think that this game can be fun to move around at times, but I think a lot of times it's not really. And I think that that for me is a, kind of a big part for me. And I, this is something I said when I played the demo and I do think that I still believe this is that I would be a lot happier to go back and replay these levels. If I was able to kind of like stunt a little bit, you know what I mean? Like if I was able to, you know, I love replaying Mario games to get all the collectibles. Cause I can, you know, triple jump and do all these flips and do all this fun shit that I'm kind of like creating my own difficulty there, like as I'm going, you know? And I think that with this, you're kind of like a little more like stymied as to like what you're able to actually do. Like, I think if they had just added in like Peach's like float ability or, you know, or the ability to run or something like that, you know, like little things like that is, is stuff that like, I would like to see in like a sequel, you know what I mean? Which I, I think there should be a sequel to this. And I hope they do make another one. Have you played Dashing Thief Peach yet? I have. David? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think that like, that's just, I'm going to go back to it. Cause I think that like, I, I'm with you. Like it, 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 it doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> like it feels great when it's working, but it's really easy to miss. And then you have like a second, like a lot of, it gives you a lot of leeway, but it's just not very tight. Um, yeah. Because well, it, of that. Well, there's also all the weird drones and stuff in that one, which are like kind of hard to hit sometimes. I was like a little, it's it's funny. Like the game is like super simple. And then occasionally you'll just be like, why can't I do this really simple thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's like, is it my fault? Or is the game just like slightly jank? And I think it's slightly jank, you know? Um, but again, I'm being a little critical of it, but I, I, I think it's fun. And they do good work and it's like, and it definitely feels like a good feel game. I think we should also say this is the first uh, game that, uh, this is like uh, directed, I forget his name, but he was the director of the original Goemon games. Uh, and this is the first game that he's directed since then. Uh, this guy's at Goodfield. So and wow. Goemon are it's just a really cool legendary franchise. So it's cool to see him back. But it's an interesting kind of amalgam of experiences that kind of makes this up. Yeah, well, let's talk about the am amalgam part, maybe like because there are all these different gameplay experiences, and I'm curious, both aesthetically and gameplay wise, what everybody's favorites so far are of the you know outfits and or like what you do as those different characters. Um, Bree, do you have a favorite? Um, <laughs> it's tough. Um, I aesthetically, I'm so into Detective Peach. I love the okay. idea of her with like no sh like short hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I love her. Interesting. I've been saying that all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Um, but I, I think the one that I had the most fun playing was probably the uh, Ninjatsu. Um, yeah. yeah, that one was just so, I, I liked the combination of it being, having some combat, but then uh, that not being the only thing. Like I thought that stealth and yeah, uh, this... hiding up on the <laughs> walls was just such a blast. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, anybody else? I'll just piggyback then because the, nin the ninja one was my favorite, not the same thing at all, but kind of reminded me of the ninja chapter in live alive. So I, I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because some of the some of the stuff kind of felt the same with the like style of sneaking around and uh, um she I has was, a little bamboo yeah. uh straw when she's like, underwater i was like yeah, this yeah. is just like in live alive <laughs> yeah <laughs> people playing live alive we're like, oh, this is just like 1800s Japan. <laughs> well, i think that's like a trope, right? Like yeah, yeah of course. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think my favorite so far has been figure skater peach. Oh, uh, really? I've, I really like that one a lot. I mean, first of all, I don't think I've ever played a figure skating game. Before. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, you know, Mario has those sections where you're on ice and you do the twirls. And I always loved those sections. Just like, because again, you're moving quickly. You have a really big jump. You can stunt. You can do all this cool stuff. Right. And I also like that the, like that one is not one of these where it's like a scrolling background with all these different areas you're going to. It's like pretty much just one 
figure skating arena rink thing where you're doing all your stuff. And I just thought that felt the most to me like a play or a presentation or something. So like with the kind of aesthetic that they're going for, it was just cool. I don't know. I just never played a game like that before. And I really enjoyed that. And I, I've only done the first one. So I'm really looking forward to acts two and three of, of figure skating peach. But um, that one was really cool. Um, I don't know that I love mermaid peach, but I like that that has like a singing mechanic. Uh, I think that that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd like, like to in, see just like in kingdom hearts. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's cool. And then, I also really like the ninja one. I'm trying to think. Oh, cowboy. I think cowboy is really fun. Okay, excuse me. Cowgirl, peach. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's not get it twisted. Uh, but no, I, I really like the lasso in that. And then I also really like the on horse auto run sections of those. Like they feel kind of the most dramatic and mm. uh, and cinematic of them. And so it's like, and those actually do pose a little bit of a challenge to actually get everything in one go. But what about you, Patrick? What are some of your favorites? Yeah, it's really tough, uh, actually, for me to pick. But uh, I, I think I, I think I gravitate towards the Dashing Thief as my favorite gameplay. Like it, it doesn't quite land where I want it to, but it feels like interesting with the sort of swinging mechanic and stuff like that. I like it and the the speed of it when you can nail them, um, especially on the last Dashing Thief one, is really cool. Um, but I also agree with the figure skating element. I love the aesthetic of it. And I just think it's cool to make a gameplay out of it. Like in some of the weird things you do where you have to like steal back your little followers and, and the way they kind of the gameplay of it is cool. And I also agree that I feel that way about the mermaid one. It doesn't quite land for me, but I think it's a cool attempt. And it just reminds me of Wander Song because it's got the same directional like singing and it sounds like Wander Song singing to me, which is, mm. uh, I, I, but it, it just, um, it's just kind of cool that they tried some different things. And I think that's why some of those other ones are, are even if they didn't nail it or are, are interesting, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how, how does Kung Fu Peach play? Cause I have yet to do that one. Yeah. Um, that one and, and mighty we haven't talked about. I oh yeah. Mighty, right. mighty they're is similar. Too. Cause yeah. they're both um, like strength based. Um, the Kung Fu one has like a part where you've got a, like jump on different poles that I struggled with at the, <laughs> at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. It, it also has a lot of quick time event type. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you have to press the button at the right time. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. Stuff, which I don't know how it feels playing it. Cause I've mostly just watched it. Um, yeah, good call on Mighty too. I forgot about that one. That one's actually kind of fun because it's not just like you're beating up a bunch of guys. It's like you're saving people. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I kind of like that element of it. It's like you pick up a giant ass bus and <laughs> like awesome. have people cross. It just it feels good. Like it feels like kind of empowering. And I, I like that one a lot. It's got some escort type stuff in some of them. Yeah, too, which is nice. Yeah. As we're talking about the variety here and the different kinds of peaches, I do think that, it, again, if I could just kind of like be a bit <laughs> negative, it's like I think that kind of the downfall of this game, and this is kind of what I was worried about at the beginning, was when you're the jack of all trades, you're kind of the master of none. It's like each one of these is kind of like developed just enough to be kind of somewhat satisfying and then you can't do them anymore. And that's kind of it. I mean, I know there are the rehearsals, which I haven't gotten to, but I've read about and I understand that those are actually pretty challenging and it kind of like puts the abilities really to the test, right. To do the rehearsals. Um, but that said, it's kind of like, I kind of wish that this maybe had less transformations and mm. flesh them out a little bit more. Um, I don't know if you guys feel the same way about that uh, or if that's just a me thing. Hmm. I could see the opposite too. More would be better. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's not, yeah, I want to give you more. Okay, never mind. I'm in, I'm in the minority well, here. More I, I, I can hear what you're saying that like a more tightly focused Princess Peach game would have worked maybe better for me. But like if we're going to have like this style, then I kind of wish there was more um, rather than less, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. But you mentioned the rehearsals. I'd like to talk about those. I know it sounds like, Brie, you've done some. I actually think that I've only done two, but um, I think it's my favorite part because it is kind of challenging and it is like, I kind of want to play it again and again, as opposed mm -hmm. to like when you're like, oh, I got to go get those collectibles. I don't know that if I want to play it again. <laughs> but those are, are like, I want to get the medal. Um, 
Yeah, especially that sword fight one was pretty tough. Um, and it was fun every time. <laughs> I love anything that's going to punish you for like getting hit once. I'm just like, yeah. I love those perfectionist games. Um, and you get a dress for each one. I don't know. I'm the type Ooh, of person okay. where if I get like a dress, yeah. I'm like, I'm all in. <laughs> the only problem I have with rehearsals is like the name of them. Like, wouldn't a rehearsal be the place where you could mess <laughs> up? And showtime would be yeah. where you couldn't. But that's <laughs> neither here yeah. nor there. What's the, what's the word when like, the critic is in the audience. I was just about to say that. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was about to say. It was like, it really should be like when the critic is there in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those yeah. should be. The encore yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting to those. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to beat this game because it is so short and it's so yeah. breezy. You know, like, um, again, like I don't know that this is necessarily a game that I would have picked up had we not done this show, but I was like. I was kind of surprised by it. I don't know. I I, I liked it a lot. Uh, can, can I say what I wish this game was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I because I, this is just like an aside, and, and 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 I won't belabor this point for too long. But I think that I feel like this game is a little Klonoa coded, and I've been thinking about this a lot. And I don't know if you guys have played Klonoa. Am I the only Klonoa player here? Um, that sucks because you guys would be like, you're so right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but basically, uh, but Klonoa, the ways that this game is similar to Klonoa is that it's kind of, you know, Klonoa is 2.5D and that it's a, a 2D side scroller, but has 3D environments. And the difference being there that you're going left to right, but you can shoot to and from away mm. from the camera. Right. So there's a lot of stuff in this game. That's like that, where it feels like it's mostly 2D, but you can kind of, either move a little bit or shoot to the front or the back. So there's that. In Klonoa, you've also got this, uh, I've got my Klonoa figure over here, but you, you've you got uh, a little like companion that turns into your weapon that you like throw. Mm. You know, Klonoa has like the flutter jump thing that which would fit really well with like Peach's float jump, right? So what I'm, the whole time I was playing this, I was like, man, I kind of just wish it was a little bit more like that, right? Or if you're going to do this variety stuff, that's cool and keep it like that. But it felt like the peach, the times where you're just peach herself felt really underbaked to me, you know? And I was like, I feel like that was a little bit of a missed opportunity there for me to like really enjoy, you know, peach not putting on airs and like pretending to be someone else, but just like kind of owning who she is and like her own like abilities and agency as a character. Because throughout the years, like, you know, she's, you know, all the smash games, like all, you know, the super Mario brothers too. Like we've seen a lot of ways that makes peach a unique character in an action platformer sense. And I kind of just wish that there was a little bit more of that sprinkled throughout this. So again, not necessarily a dig against this game, but something I'd hope to see them expand on in a sequel. I don't know. I think that'd be really nice. <laughs> and then last thing I'll say, uh, it's funny too, that like everybody like shits on super princess peach for being a game about uh it's like oh it's a game about a girl so it's a game about her emotions but there are a lot of times in this game where you're just like amping up people around you <laughs> you know what i mean where it's like you're just going up to people and like giving them like the confidence that they need where it's like uh, i don't know what's that saying about like every uh every man has like a woman <laughs> like behind them that's like feed pumping them up <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> 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 so i just thought that was kind of funny uh when i was playing it the first time uh but anyway i i do think that's you just give people a lot of confidence in this game i i really agree about i just like playing peach and smash and playing peach from mario 2 on the float i just want I know that the reason they made a game like this, um, because it's going to appeal to the audience, but like, uh, I would love a more difficult, like I would love a platformer game that focuses on that float mechanic because it's always been sort of a cheat or a, a, like a help thing. Right. Um, or maybe that's not the right term, but like, I would love a game that takes that mechanic and like pushes it to be like you're yeah. having to like float through difficult sections and stuff like that. Or even not, I mean, not even that. Like, I mean, they could have just added it into this game and it would have changed nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it just yeah. would have felt good, you know? Like, I don't know. I think like, you know, the game feel is super important, um, I think. And and some of those sections, I was just kind of like, I was like, hmm, this kind of feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity. But 
Well, we should move on. Let's talk about the, the cosmetics, the dresses. So there's a lot of unlocking of uh, dresses. And honestly, that's been a lot of fun for me and my son over here to like, that one's cool because it has purple highlights. I like, let's wear that one. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> like uh, you, but it's kind of, you do have to get all of the collectibles to unlock some stuff. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And, and that's, not always easy on the first playthrough. So um, I don't know. Have, what, do you, have, what do you all decking your peach out in when they're not a, in a costume? Or, or what? how are we feeling about the cosmetics and the dresses and all those unlocks? Yeah, I mean, I, I went with the gradient dress early on because I liked how it like kind of faded <laughs> yes. to white at the top and I liked her white mm. bow. I thought that was really nice. <laughs> yeah. um, I've been trying to fuck with some of the other ones. I've only beaten two bosses so far, which we haven't talked about the bosses, which that's, that's another thing that really reminds me of Klonoa are the boss fights. But... I do like the disco ball dress. Yep. Um, I wanted to like the green dress because it's not pink and I wanted to try something that wasn't pink, but I think that dress is ugly as fuck. If I'm like being the snake honest. one or the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the snake one. I do not like that dress. Mm. I think it's disgusting. Just wait till you get the yellow one. It's even worse. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but I do, I do like that as an <laughs> impetus to want to keep going because that's a, that's a fun part. Cosmetics in any game are like a good motivation mm-hmm. to keep unlocking things. Have you yeah. been uh, matching your Starlas? <laughs> like <laughs> trying to match? <laughs> yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Despite how maligned it was, uh, we rocked the green dress for a while and had a green Starla uh, alongside it. But the, I, I, maybe it just is like oh, we haven't unlocked much with Starla. Starla's outfits are pretty boring. Mm-hmm. It's just colors, at least at the beginning. Um, there mm-hmm. are some where you can have, you know, two colors eventually and stuff like that. Two. Yeah, yeah. But even then, it still isn't as exciting as I want. I liked it to black. Be. I just thought it was funny to, for it to be black. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I just wish you could dress peach and black. That'd be fucking sick. Yeah. Can you eventually? Uh, I don't spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, can, can we talk about bosses real quick? Because I don't think sure. we have that on here. Did you guys like the bosses? It's one of those things about this game. I I have only jumped in to help on bosses because um, my kid has mostly been playing it. And I think most of the bosses are pretty intuitive. But there are a couple times where I've watched him play and I've also not known what to do until he's handed me the controller and I've kind of intuited it, but mm. some of that, and I usually figure it out, but um, it's been interesting to watch him struggle with certain parts of it. I don't know if anybody else has had that experience, but I don't know. They're pretty standard Mario feeling bosses to me with like three hit type stuff. It's not yeah. mm-hmm. bad. I think aesthetically they kind of, I don't love the way grape and all those characters look personally. Um, I, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know how are you how are y'all feeling personally I, I wish they were all like the snake one I thought that was like such a nice change of pace to be doing like a I don't know what you call it but, like <laughs> to be yeah. traveling <laughs> uh, yeah yeah it's know, like it's fun. it's, it's- it's like that wind level in in Donkey Kong that we talk about, or the one with the the water comes through and you have to hide behind certain things so you don't get hit by the tidal wave or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I found them to be pretty charming, and and they've been some of my favorite parts of the game so far. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm makes me worried about the future bosses because I've only done a couple so far because you guys don't seem super hot on them. But I don't know. Um, they're all right. I actually think it's fine. I just like it hasn't stood out to me. But I'm I'm reflecting on it. I don't want to like spoil any of them. But the one boss that I did all myself, my my kid handed me, and he's like, well, "Do you want to do this one?" And I was like, "Only if you don't, because you know I want you to play. If you want to, he's like, "No, why don't you do it?" I did actually enjoy the whole boss fight. I don't want to. Mm-hmm say what it was and thematically i think sometimes they're fun if weird to me again like aesthetically i think it's weird but like uh the, some of them fit in <laughs> theme wise with the play stuff um yeah maybe we could just quickly hit the notes of like how do we feel about the music in this game um i've been humming that lobby tune a lot but i don't know if i the music in the level stands out to me as much um i don't know what do y'all think I've loved it, um, I, I especially in the um, mermaid levels and maybe they're in the later ones, but like the way that the song maps to the song in the background that you're singing, I, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. Um, but that lobby tune is is, is hidden for me. <laughs> that, jazz, that jazzy ness <laughs> yeah. uh, of it. And then I just, one thing I think does stand out for me in this game is the animations. Like, uh, I think there's just some really cool stuff they do with uh, some cinematic type stuff at the end of, of some of the levels and that kind of thing where you like 
strike a pose or you like the camera shifts for like a big moment. And I've thought there's been some stuff where I'm like, that looks cool. Mm. <laughs> so I think yeah. that's been cool about it. I think the animations are nice. I think the character design is kind of weird. I mean, the, the main the guys. Thetans. Yeah, yeah. The Thetans or whatever they're called. <laughs> like what theater. Thetans, like the Thetans are from, uh, from yeah. Scientology. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. They, uh, I don't know. They're like three circles. Like it's like a circle for the nose, a circle for the head, a circle for the body. And that's kind of it. It's like, all right. <laughs> but I hope you got paid. <laughs> whoever designed that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think that's fine. I think the game is very pretty though and it's got really good lighting effects and it's got really like occasionally like i was in a stage and the reflections were like holy shit like what's going on like you guys went really hard on some of this stuff i think it kind of shows because the game does not have good performance at all (laughs) you know and i think that you know we, we should get to that here it's like if there's ever a game that came out for the switch that was like this was designed for the switch pro or the or the or the super switch like it's this one, you know. I mean, we're definitely in it's the weird year how right bad now. It is. Where yeah, Nintendo doesn't make games like this, you know, where it's like uh you have here in the notes the loading screens oh. are like it Chugging. like physically pains me to look at them, you know. <laughs> like it's I, like the curtain will and like, close why? and it goes It's just yeah. a curtain. Like why is it so <laughs> chunky? Yeah. Well, that's what's funny to me uh, to me too is like if you want to hide that you're chugging, they should have just done like a black screen, right? Yeah. Like and said loading on it or or like a a single pretty still that says loading. I think they But it's the, all these sort of like- animations that are like rotating and just you know. <laughs> that's well, even when you- it's like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even when you like beat a stage the like the little like energy thing that goes from the door to the center it goes at like one frame a second it's like what are you guys doing here man like i just don't understand and it's not like good field doesn't know how to do optimized games like yoshi's crafted world and woolly world like those so games ran beautiful. solid woolly 60 world. fps or, On the Wii yeah, yeah yeah i mean it wasn't 60 fps but they were they oh, were but it was sharp yeah and not that kids give a shit about frame pacing you know what i mean but i mean it's just very out of character, and it really makes me feel like this game was intended for a Super Switch game that was going to be backwards compatible, <coughs> and we just never got the updated version because they didn't end up releasing their system on time, right? And so, um, yeah, so I'd be <coughs> I'd be very interested now to see how uh, Thousand Year Door performs whenever that comes mm. out because I've got a sneaking suspicion that that because that game also looks beautiful from the, all you the videos they've shown. I think it's going to chug. Yeah. I think it's got like really good lighting effects and stuff that like the, you know, this, you know, almost decade old hardware now is just going to have a really hard time playing. which is a shame. Sorry, it's a hard sentence to hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think we should wrap up this discussion. I think if you're out there on the fence about this game, I said it up top, but I'll say it again. I think this is a great game for kids, for people who are casuals. Like my wife watched us play this game. She's like, I want to play this game. I think I could play this game. She doesn't play a lot of games. And I think it's like, yeah, you could. <laughs> I think you could, you know what I mean? Uh, if you want to, you should. Um, and then if you're really into Peach and and what else, Summer, who you have, you added somebody to this list. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, as soon as this game was announced, uh, I'm, I, as listeners may know, I'm very big in cosplayer circles and, uh, people were already, um, they, before the game came out, uh, <coughs> were announcing who they were going to cosplay. And I guarantee we're going to see full groups of people, uh, like, you know, which peach you're going to be like full peach groups. And, um, I'm still, uh, maybe that'll be a Patreon vote of t- which peach <laughs> I, which peach I cosplay. Um, so head on over to patreon.com slash switch. Yeah. You listen to this, Jordan, you better make that poll. Um, cause I don't know. Um, cause like I'm looking at some of these patterns too, and that just opens up a whole other, uh, opportunity of gown design too. Uh, we're, we're so into that kind of stuff and like especially some of the animations and sequences in like it's just giving me skit ideas like i i bet a lot of really talented cosplayers are going to bring some of these scenes to life in some mm. like competitions uh this is prime for that press. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we didn't talk about it either but you kind of hinted at it Bree. there's a lot of it's not a lot there's a little bit of voice acting where at the end 
Peach will sometimes say things, right? <laughs> yeah. like, I threatened to only talk in Peachisms this <laughs> week. It's like it was startling at first hearing her yeah, say more than "who." Oh, oh shucks. Yeah. Oh, it's That's a new. Favorite. It's the new uh, Peach voice actress as well. This is not the the oh. same old Peach. You okay. know, this is the the Kevin Afghani of uh, <laughs> of of Peach. I'm not sure who it is. I should yeah, actually look that. that up. That contributes uh, to it too. It's a little bit of a different voice, but also like I'm not used to Peach saying any full sentences, and so it's uh, it is funny when when I can't I can't remember which one. There's one or two where she says quite a bit. It feels like I mean, uh, yeah, it's short, but um, there, there's a funny bit um, at the end of the Cowgirl Peach where she goes whale shucks, but it yeah. sounds like she's <laughs> saying whale sharks, uh, which is really funny. That's all I can hear. <laughs> nice uh well is there anything else before we call it on princess peach showtime anybody want to uh, so, samantha kelly by the way yeah is the I'm, voice just... of uh of peach <laughs> took this, me a second this... to find it because I, been... I kept finding things that just said anya taylor joy i'm like this is not anya <laughs> taylor joy <laughs> oh are you are you sure because i think she's always she's been around for a while yeah peach oh I really she did it again yeah i know there's been like three major voice actresses for peach and that's one of them um but wow, no, I guess I'm wrong. That's really interesting. It, that's who it, it is, right? It is this it is the same actor. Well, I apologize for getting that wrong earlier. Cause it it just I guess it is just because she's saying more shit this time Pete, that you just don't usually hear her say. It's actual words instead I think, of yeah. ah. I think <laughs> yeah. they I think I what it sounds like, what it seems like is that um maybe she was asked to like tone down the high pitchiness for this mm. game. Definitely. After, she's it's a lower like, register. Especially yeah, after yeah. the movie, maybe like to kind of make more match uh mm-hmm. movie peach, right? So that like New onboarded, sh- sh- probably most likely children fans, right? Aren't like, mm-hmm. wait, hello, <laughs> 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 you know, you know, yeah. kids, right? I listen. I get it. As somebody who used to like do Elsa for parties, they would like grab my hands and be like, "Why aren't your nails blue?" Like, <laughs> or like, "Why aren't your shoes like you know like why where is the icicle on your shoe?" And I'm like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I left it at home. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kids pick up on that stuff. All right. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it then for our discussion on a Princess Peach Showtime. If you're out there playing it, definitely let us know what your favorite transformation is or what you're thinking of the game, and we'll try to shout you out. And we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the games that we've been playing recently. All right, well, I've mostly been playing Princess Peach Showtime, to be honest with you. I played some Splatoon 3 for the Splatfest, and I'm um, sure I played some Minecraft this week, but I don't think I played anything new to talk about, though I have been testing and playing my game, uh, Monochrome Heights, to to get it out there to hopefully hear other people <laughs> play it, but I'm playing the shit out of that. Um, and so I think pretty soon I'm going to fire up some new single player experience, and I'll, I'll talk about that soon, but that's where I'm Very at good. right now. Side order. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna keep bullying you until you play the <laughs> Splatoon DLC. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I'll go next. Um, yeah, like you said, obviously I've been playing a lot of Princess Peach Showtime, and I played a little bit of Splatoon Three, and I had a good time with that. Uh, but I did beat Gang Picross Two for the Game Boy. <laughs> I completed it. Uh, well, okay, Patrick, you're like scoffing. That's not what I was expecting to hear. Like, not like a huge like- accomplishment. <laughs> It's a huge accomplishment, man. Uh, well, what did you expect that I was going to say? I don't know, but like something that was difficult, like that you've been working on. For, I don't know. Is this something I you've been working, working on, for on this for a long ass okay, time? I don't I've, know. Been playing, I've been playing this game for like three months, basically, like on and off. It's a long ass game. It's got like almost 300 puzzles in it. And each of the puzzles is like 30 by 30. They're all incredibly long and incredibly hard. And I can't believe I actually beat it. I'm so proud of myself. Okay. Uh, and it's like, it's like Game Boy Picross, which is like, there's uh, no, you know, there's no, it's it's this game back here. I've got uh, there's no color, <laughs> or is yeah, there? It's color? got the it's I've got the old cartridge right here. It's a Japanese only game. I played the fan translation uh, on an emulator and I beat it. And yeah, man, it's like it, it doesn't have all the quality of life mm-hmm. of like the newer games. It's kind of just like you just got to use your fucking brain, figure it out, baby. And uh, so anyway, I'm really proud of myself. Thank you guys for having my back. and being Thank you for the context. I think without the context, I was like, uh, yeah. you beat Picross games a lot, don't you? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you check yourself before you check yourself? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
thinks this is a huge accomplishment. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right. Uh, other than that, uh, I haven't been playing too much. I have been picking back up fitness boxing too, because your boy's getting tubby and i'm trying to uh get my blood pumping again and not just sit on the couch eating chips all day which is what i do a lot um but yeah so i've been doing a little bit of that and getting back into that and um trying to get my body moving and then uh, i did also pick up prince of persia the lost crown Mm -hmm. uh it's on sale right now on the eShop. uh it was on sale somewhat recently for physical versions uh, but I knew I wanted to get it digitally, so I got it. I, I picked it up uh, when it went on sale there. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I haven't gotten too far into it, admittedly. I do want to give a quick shout out uh, to a guy named Zach, who I met at the bar that I was at right before I came over here and recorded, who was also <laughs> playing his Switch at the bar. Uh, and he was playing Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. And he showed me uh, a ball. He was like a little kid. He was like, look at this part. And like <laughs> showed me a part <laughs> where he got stuck. And uh, so that was kind of fun. So what's up, Zach? I hope you uh, listen to the show um but yeah that's pretty much what i've been playing um i'm looking forward to uh, a few games that i picked up recently and i'm definitely looking forward to putting more time into prince of persia because that is a really cool game so far um yeah summer what about you have you been playing anything with the move nope uh just unpacking (laughs) in real life so uh i think about the game i think about unpacking and like in my mind i think about like you know, how you unpack things in the game. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's just, if I think about that, it'll make it easier. <laughs> uh, otherwise, no, I, um, it was hard to cut off the Fortnite addiction, um, but it, it might have been for the best. I'm not interested in this current season, though. It's like, it's like, okay, I'll talk about it really quickly uh, just because I talk about Fortnite a lot. The current season is like Greek gods. Um, and, but I don't like a lot of the designs of the, like how they've like, um, the, I guess, art direction of the season. So it's an easy pass for me. Uh, so probably won't be playing it as much so I can finally start other games like Persona 3. And I don't know. There's a lot of games. That's yeah, what I want to yeah. play. I want to play Unicorn Overlord, man. <laughs> so are you not a kind of person that can play games in the car? I absolutely can play games in the car. Mm. Why? Why do you ask? Well, because you just were in a car for a long time. I figured. Oh, it's so cute that you think game. I didn't drive here. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, for, for some reason, I thought I thought uh, I thought Kyle drove most of the way. So Kyle did drive the entire way. He drove the twenty six foot uh, U haul. Oh, you guys were driving separate. And then I, I drove I a vehicle with Poop Girl and two dogs and two guinea pigs. And I made sure to stay up to date on my Claritin gotcha. <laughs> in well, that vehicle with all that fur and hay. <laughs> well, noted that you're not the kind of person that plays their Switch while driving. On a Good console. on you. Yeah, I don't yeah. play my Switch while driving. Now, the 3DS, just kidding. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. L- looking forward to getting to game again. Uh, what about you, Brie? What have you been playing recently, other than Princess Peach? Yeah, Showtime? now that I'm done with Princess Peach, I'll probably go back and try to finish uh, Pikmin Four. It's been a blast, um, mm-hmm. and I'm also on Pikmin Bloom still. I don't know if anyone oh. else is, but I'm still chugging oh, yeah. along. Yeah. Uh, nice. Still, still collecting those badges, and um, I'm also doing my first playthrough of Fallout New Vegas. So okay. that's been fun. Wait, yeah. okay. I also started Fallout New Vegas. Why are we all starting Fallout New Vegas right I think now? It's a Magic? I don't know. That's for me. <laughs> the new Magic decks are oh, all Fallout based. So I didn't know that. Um, I just another friend of mine had started it recently, so I decided to start it because it's on Game Pass. And um, yeah, I totally forgot that I had started Fallout in Vegas. It was like a month ago that I started it. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. kind of in the air right now. You know, there's the Magic set. There's also the TV show coming oh, out. Oh, okay. Um, I think yeah. there's a lot of cool stuff. But also, yeah, I mean, Fallout New Vegas is such a good game. I really hope you enjoy that. I, I love that game so much. All right. Well, I think that's it then for this episode on Princess Peach Showtime. Thank you so much, Bree, for coming and joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thanks to MilkyWay.co for doing our website. Thanks to Corduroy for doing our music. Thanks to all our patrons on Patreon. If you're looking for me, Patrick, you can find me as PDYX in my game company as One Frog Games, most places on the internet. You can find me at Weeb Witched. I'm pretty much ever on the internet at Monolith Fiji. And what about you, Bree? Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at um, at your pal Bree on Instagram, but um, I'm also thought leader. <laughs> but the last <laughs> E is a three um, on 
uh, Twitch. And nice. Very good. Very good. Shoot Bria follow. Uh, and if you'd like to find our show on social media, we are at Switchheads on Twitter, at Super Switchheads on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We've got a website, switchheads.com. And then we've got our Facebook group and our Discord and our Patreon, uh, like Patrick said. Um, please join us over there on the Discord. We'd love to have you. And if you follow us on uh, Patreon, you subscribe over there, you get access to a very special Buff Patrons channel <laughs> on the Discord, uh, which is a great place where people mostly post pictures of their pets so uh, that sounds good that sounds like it's worth five bucks a month to me baby so uh hop over to our patreon and uh and shoot us some love over there but that's gonna do it for this episode on super princess peach what a delightful game uh, we're gonna be back next week with another great episode so don't go anywhere but in the meantime gang you guys know the drill stay safe out there be kind to yourself be kind to one another uh let's all buy princess peach gowns and wear them together <laughs> like i forgot to do this episode but it's okay maybe next maybe next episode i'll wear my princess peach outfit that'll make sense <laughs> anyway that's gonna do it we love you guys very much we will see you next week bye bye <laughs> my son and I today were trying to pitch ideas for different peach transformations if there were more and he was like what about That's pregnant so peach and I was like That's hilarious <laughs> reality TV <peach. laughs> oh, my motorhome I know I'm like, yeah, how yeah. can peach even be <laughs> <laughs>